Hello everybody, this is Justina from Justina the Handmade. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to create this drawstring uh, backpack. As you can see, this design um, is um, 4th of July themed. I think it's a great little bag to have with you when you are enjoying uh, any get-togethers uh, during uh, 4th of July. And um, it's, a, it's a great bag to have with you uh, when you are going to the beach as well. Uh, this pattern um, is available in my Etsy store. This is a pattern that uh, uh, doesn't come with written instructions. Uh, this video serves as the instruction for the, uh, for the pattern. Um, you would need to purchase the pattern to get the full cut list um, and uh, notes for the pattern to be able to finish the bag. Uh, this backpack features a zipper front pocket that it's uh, pretty large. It goes all the way to the side seam. Also, it has a secure back zipper pocket so you can have your cell phone nice and secure on your back. And it just have a plain lining inside um, to just have your uh, items, uh, any items that you would like to take with you to a barbecue or to a beach. This pattern is written for a waterproof canvas and a little piece of vinyl. You can replace the vinyl with a waterproof canvas. Uh, it doesn't require any interfacing because we want the back to be a little bit slouchy because otherwise we wouldn't be able to close it. Uh, like I said, the full cut list uh, is included in the pattern. The full supply list is included in the Etsy li listing, so you can go review the listing and the required supplies uh, before you commit uh, to buy the pattern. This bag it's, uh, it's a beginner-friendly project. Uh, obviously, I'm going to walk you through on the video step-by-step step how to create it. This back is also sewn on a domestic machine. So if you have a domestic machine only, you're gonna be uh, able to complete that project. Uh, also, this pattern uh, will be available at a discount uh, for one week uh, from the premiere of this video. Uh, to get access to the discount code, please make sure to join my Facebook group. All links are in the description box below. And now, if you would like to see how this cute bag comes together, Please keep watching. To start the project, you're gonna cut all your pattern pieces. Uh, just refer to the uh, cut list included with the pattern file and cut all your pieces based on the provided measurements. The only printable template will be the facing of the zipper for our back pocket. Everything else will be uh, cut based on the measurements. So you're not gonna be wasting a lot of uh, paper or your printer ink. Uh, so I'm just going to run through them real quick. So I have my zipper facing that it's cut out from the vinyl because it has to be a non-fraying material. My two base pieces. This is the uh, front uh, left panel. This is the front right panel. And you can see I um, embellish it with uh, three white stars as this is a, a 4th of July themed backpack. You don't need a special equipment to do it. Uh, you can purchase uh, just one sheet of heat transfer vinyl and just cut uh, your stars uh, by hand. And then you can just use an iron to uh, transfer them to, uh, to your fabric. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, I just used my iron. I, uh, I was just checking how is it looking? I use some pressing cloth to do not overheat my uh, fabric, but as you can see, it came out pretty well. Uh, so those are the front panels. Uh, then we have our top back panel, uh, our back uh, packet zipper with our lining, and our front uh, lining with our zipper and two main lining panels. Uh, I am not interfacing uh, anything. I'm not um, using any stabilizer for the fabrics because it is a, a drawstring backpack. So it has to be a little slouchy for, um, for the closure to work. So just keep that in mind when you are choosing your materials that it still has to be uh, a little slouchy. You should not be using very stiff materials. Uh, also, uh, we're gonna need a little bit of 
uh, hardware. So I have two uh, zipper poles for my zippers. I have a little scrap of webbing tape for my uh, side tabs and I have rope uh, that I'm gonna be using as my uh, straps for my backpack and the drawstring string. So now to start our project, we're gonna work on our front packet. We're gonna take our front packet lining and zipper and the front uh, right panel. You wanna make sure you, you have the panel the way you want it to be on your back, especially if you are using a, a directional fabric. Now that you have your panel lying in the position that it's gonna be on your back, uh, we're gonna mark uh, our uh, left lower corner uh, for our zipper placement. So you're gonna take your panel and keeping in mind the corner that the zipper gonna be so into, you're gonna flip it over, take a ruler and measure three quarters of an inch of uh, from the longer edge. Make sure that you are marking with a erasable pen. This is a heat erase pen, so I'm gonna be able to erase my marks with, uh, with some heat. So now that I have that uh, marked, I'm gonna take double-sided tape, take my zipper and place a strip of the tape along one long edge of the zipper. And now that the tape is exposed, I'm gonna place my zipper tape along the mark line. So I want my zipper, I want my zipper edge to run along the uh, three quarter line we just drew on our panel. So now that uh, you have that placement done, you can mark about an inch uh, three quarter to an inch away from the short edge because we want to now sew with the one quarter of an inch seam allowance but only up to the, the mark. So you don't want to sew all the way uh, to the end of the zipper. Now that the zipper uh, is affixed to your panel, you're going to take your project to the machine and you're going to sew uh, along the long edge of the zipper with the one fourth of an inch seam allowance and you can use a 3.5 or 2.5 stitch length. Make sure to back stitch well on the beginning and on the end of the seam. Now that your zipper is sewn into your uh, outer panel, you're gonna take the lining for your packet, you're gonna open it and making sure that it's right sides together with the outer panel, you're gonna clip it along the side edge. When you have your panel prepped like this, you're gonna take it to the machine. You're gonna flip your project over, making sure that this, the lining is nice and flat and straight underneath our project. You're gonna sew following the exactly same seam. So you're gonna sew from the beginning to the end of the seam, making sure that the seam uh, is uh, at least three quarter of an inch shorter than the zipper. Now that the lining is attached and I follow the same seam, so you can see this exactly just one seam showing because uh, the second seam is right on top of the first one. I'm gonna take my shears and make a cut that goes up to the first stitch. So you want to make sure that it goes up to first stitch. Obviously, you don't want to cut any stitches. And now that we have that done, we're going to flip our zipper in the final position. So you're going to put all the fabric on the wrong side of the project. making sure everything is nice and flat. You can use your iron to iron the fabric. Now that uh, this is nice and flat, 
you're gonna fold the panel at the point where your seam ended and you're gonna align that with the zipper tape now that you have the fabric fold folded you're gonna fix it with clips then you're gonna flip your project over and repeat that with the lining so you want to make sure that the, the lining is also folded away and now that uh, you have your project prep like this you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew from the top edge right up to the first stitch of the previous seam making sure you are uh, not sewing inside or outside we have to be sewing exactly at the point where the previous seam ended also keep your lining in mind because we we want to enclose both the lining and the outer panel after you have your little triangle sewn in on the front and on the back so on the lining side as long as well as on the front panel you're gonna unfold both and now you can um, again just finger press it making sure you have a nice sharp corner or take it to your ironing board and iron the fabric making sure everything is nice and flat on the front and on the back and you're gonna then uh, take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along those two seams with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch so my zipper tape is top stitched uh, also now a note if you are at any point uncomfortable with working with the zipper without the pull on you can insert the pull I just find it easier uh, to work with the zipper tape itself uh, and just putting the zipper pull in the last moment I think it gives you a nice a nicer and straighter look but if you do not feel comfortable doing that the zipper pull on the zipper should be in the upper position so that means it should be on top when closed so that's just uh, something to keep in mind uh, our zipper is nicely top stitched we can start working on the rest of our packet so you want to bring the lining of the packet up and aligning with the top of, uh, with the top edge of the zipper you can clip this together And now we want to uh, close our top edge so you're gonna you can also uh, clip those two edges together and then you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew uh, the top edge of the lining only so you want to make sure that um, you place the panel this way on the machine and you're just gonna sew along this uh, open edge with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and uh, 2.5 or 3.5 stitch now that the top of the lining is uh, finished uh, we can now base stitch uh, the lining to the zipper tape so you want to baste it uh, to the zipper tape and also you can baste it on the top and uh, and along the uh, side uh, make sure that you are basting the side of the packet it's going to be on the side of your bag when the bag is uh, completed so you make sure you're basting it within the seam allowance so don't go any deeper than one eighth of an inch so now my lining is based to my front panel all around so now i can attach um, my left uh, front panel Take the smaller panel and place it right sides together along the edge with the zipper and when you have your panel prepped like this take it to the machine and so along these uh, and so along the edge with the one fourth of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 or 2.5 stitch and now that your side panel is sewn in uh, you can take it to the uh, ironing board and you can iron this panel flat you want to make sure that all the seam allowances are lying behind the panel and when your panel is ironed you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna top stitch 
on the smaller panel with the 1 8 of an inch uh, seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. So now that my panel is uh, top stitched, uh, I before I move on to the next step, which is attaching the uh, bottom panel to my front of the back, I have to insert my zipper pull. And to do that, I have to unpick a couple stitches of the basting stitch. Make sure the thread is out of the zipper coils and insert my zipper pull. All right, and now that you're happy with the way your zipper pull is on, uh, we're gonna work on attaching our uh, bottom panel. Take one of the bottom panels, the vinyl panel, and you're gonna place it wrong sides together uh, along the bottom edge and secure that with clips. When you, uh, when you have uh, the front panel prepped, you're gonna prep your back panel as well. So you're gonna take the upper uh, back outer panel and to make sure that you have it the right way up, you can just uh, compare it to the panel uh, of the front of the back. So now we know we have it the right way up. You're gonna take the second uh, bottom panel and you're gonna align them uh, together along the long edge and now secure that with clips. When you have uh, when you have both of your panels ready, you're gonna take them to the machine and you're gonna sew along those uh, two edges with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and uh, 3.5 stitch length. Now that we have our bottom panels attached to the back and front, we're gonna open them and finger press it. And when we have that uh, prepped, you go, we're gonna take uh, the panels back to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch on the vinyl panel with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length and we're gonna uh, do that on both the front and the back panel. Now my panels are top stitched, the back and the front. And as you can see, I keep changing my uh, thread color because um, I, I'm i not super confident top stitcher. And if you're using a similar color to the fabric that you're top stitching on, it always uh, looks better. So if that's something you don't have 100% confidence about, um, you can do that too. So just when you are top stitching, just change the color thread to the uh, to match the fabric uh, you are top stitching on. All right, so now the, our front panel is basically uh, prepped. So we're gonna move on to prepping the uh, zipper packet of our back panel. So what you want to do first, you want to find the midpoint of the uh, upper panel. So you can just fold it and crease it with your fingers. So I can see the crease. I'm just going to now use a pen to make it more visible. Now that you have your uh, back panel marked, you're going to take your uh, facing panel, your zipper facing panel, and you can use uh, double-sided tape. And I like to place my double-sided tape in the middle, so I'm not going to be sewing through it when I'm attaching the facing onto my fabric or when I'm uh, sewing in my zipper. So now I I have the midpoint marked. I'm gonna find the midpoint on my on the uh, facing panel. I'm gonna remove a 
uh, backing of one of the double-sided strips and making sure I'm centering the uh, facing on the fabric. Now I'm gonna push it down so the tape can stick to my outer fabric. So I wanna just make sure it's straight. So I'm just gonna check the measurements here. It looks pretty straight. So now I'm gonna continue with the top part of the facing. Looks nice and straight, so I'm gonna move on to the sides. And when I have my panel prepped like this, I'm gonna take it back to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along the outside edge of the zipper facing with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Now that our zipper facing is top stitched onto our panel, we're gonna cut out this uh, part of the fabric. Just make sure you are not cutting the facing. So take your fabric shears and make a cut in the middle. and just cut the fabric out. The trimming of the fabric doesn't have to be pretty. You just want to make sure that it's a little bigger than the opening in the facing. So when you are looking at the right side of the project you're not gonna have uh, the other uh, fabric peeking through so now that we have the panel prep to accept our zipper uh, packet lining we're gonna work to put that together so take your um, lining panels and your zipper um, that you prepped for the back zipper packet and having both panels right side together, you're gonna uh, center the zipper on the longer edge of, of the panel, making sure that the uh, zipper coils are, are on top. So you want the lining to be right side up and the zipper to be right side up. When you have that prepped, you're gonna secure that with clips. Now you're gonna take your second lining panel, you're gonna flip the first one over, exposing the other edge of the zipper, and you're gonna repeat the same thing. So you wanna make sure that the uh, zipper is centered on the longer edge of the lining panel. So this is how your lining gonna look uh, when it's sewn into the zipper. You wanna make sure that the zipper uh, coils are in an up position when you can see the wrong side of your lining. So now when you have this prep like this, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew in the zipper tape onto your lining with the one fourth of an inch seam allowance, making sure you're sewing only through one lining panel. So you're gonna sew the first one and then you're gonna switch it making sure that the other lining panel is out of the way and you're gonna uh, sew the other uh, side of the zipper onto the other lining panel. Now that the zipper is sewn into both lining panels uh, we gonna insert our zipper pull and this is something to keep in mind because the bigger panel it's gonna be the panel uh, on the top when the packet is sewn in so you just want to make sure that you're inserting the zipper pull in a way that it uh, best suits you 
on the back pocket i like it i like the zipper to close when i'm pulling from the left to the right so that's how i'm gonna insert my zipper pull now the zipper pull is on uh, now I'm going to use double-sided tape uh, to help me affix the back and inside of our uh, zipper opening. So I'm taking backing off only from the top uh, part of the zipper. Now I'm gonna take my uh, back panel and I'm gonna center the zipper inside the opening. When I'm happy with how the uh, lining is placed, now I'm gonna take the backing of the second strip of the double-sided tape and align my other side of the zipper facing. So my uh, packet lining is affixed to my uh, facing of the zipper. And now I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to top stitch around the opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length, making sure that my lining stays nice and open. So I'm not going to be uh, sewing it close. So now take it to the machine and top stitch your zipper lining onto your uh, back panel. Now my uh, zipper packet lining is stolen into my panel. I'm gonna place both lining panels together and I can trim the larger one. And now uh, we're gonna uh, close our lining. So you're gonna clip the lining uh, panels together along all those open edges. When you have your panel prepped like this, you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to sew along those open edges with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, making sure you are not sewing on the outer panel so you want to place your project this way and just follow all those uh, three sides of the line now that our lining is completed uh, to finish up the prep of our back panel we're gonna attach our side tabs for our uh, rope so you're gonna take two pieces of uh, webbing tape when your webbing tape is prepped you're gonna take a ruler and you're gonna mark three inches from the bottom of the uh, outer panel. Take one of the tabs, fold it in half, and place it at the three inch mark. I like to have a little bit overhang of my tape so it has more strength uh, when it's not cut uh, as short. So um, I'm giving it about three eighths uh, of an inch overhang. And now I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. And now that I have my panel prepped like this, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna base those two tabs onto my back panel. Now that the prep of our back panel is done, we're gonna uh, work on finishing up uh, the outer of our project. So you're gonna take the back panel and the front panel and place them right sides together. What you wanna be most particular about is the uh, side 
seams of the bottom panels because that's where you're gonna that's what's gonna be visible so you want to clip that part first if the rest doesn't align perfectly we can trim it but you just want to make sure that you're gonna have a nice seam uh, right in this point so now that you have those two points uh, now that you have those two points clipped we're gonna clip our project all around when you have your panels clip together you're gonna take a ruler and you're gonna mark inch and a half from the top edge and mark it on both sides and then from that inch and a half mark you're gonna mark another inch down So you're going to have this mark at two and a half inches and this one at inch and a half and the same on the other side. When you have your panel prep like this and with your uh, marks, you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to sew from the top to the mark, from the mark all around up to the mark on the other side and the last portion up to the top edge. So you want to make sure you are leaving this little part unsewn and make sure to backstitch well uh, on uh, in those two places. So when, when you get to this place, backstitch well, and when you start your seam again, backstitch again. And you're going to be sewing with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 or 3.5 stitch length. Now that the project is sewn on the side and on the bottom, and you can see I left this part unsewn, we're gonna box our corners so you're gonna take a ruler and just mark an inch from each seam so you want to have a one inch square measuring from the bottom and the side seam Cut this out. Now you can box your corners. I'm going to put the seam allowance from the side towards the right and the bottom uh, seam allowance towards the left so I'm gonna nest the seam allowances against each other and clip that in place do the sa same thing on the other side just making sure I'm folding the bottom seam in the same direction Now that I have both corners prepped like this, I'm gonna take the project to the machine and I'm gonna sew along those uh, open edges with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 or 3.5 stitch length. And I'm gonna create two seams. So I'm gonna create one that is at 3 eighths of an inch and one that is just outside. So um, the first one's gonna be 3 eighths and the second one it's gonna be just short of. Now that the corners are boxed, we can trim our seam allowances. And now we're gonna turn our project right side out.
So here we're gonna have a preview of our bag. So I think it's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna work on finishing up our openings. So you're gonna take your project and you're gonna butterfly the seams. So the seam allowances are folded uh, behind uh, the corresponding panel. So you can clearly see where the opening is. You can finger press it and use a pin to temporarily affix the layout. Do that on the other side. So you want to make sure you finger press it, that your fabric is nice and square. When you have that ready, um, you can also mark it with with a uh, erasable pen, so it's easier to see where you're sewing. So I'm just gonna make a mark where the opening uh, starts and ends. Because now we're gonna take our project to the machine and we're gonna top stitch around our little opening to give it a little more strength. So make, making sure that our seam allowance is nice and flat, take it to the machine and top stitch along uh, the opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Uh, you can go all around or you can just do two line of top stitching on each side of the opening. After your little openings are top stitch, we're gonna put our outer panel aside because now it's all ready to go. And we're gonna work on our lining. And you wanna make sure that uh, your lining panels are the right way up. So they should be taller than wider. So your biggest edge is the side edge of your project. So just make sure that you have it this way. And you can also mark it like I did, that this is the top edge. So now uh, take, to, uh, take your lining panels, both lining panels and place them right sides together uh, and clip them together along the sides and the bottom edge. When you have your panels prepped like this, now we're gonna mark an opening in the bottom of our lining uh, to remain unsewn and to be used to turn our project right side out. So you wanna leave a quite large opening. You want the opening to measure about seven inches. You wanna make sure that uh, you're gonna have space to uh, box your corners. Uh, so uh, it, it can be too close to the sides. When we have our panels prepped like this, we're gonna take them to the machine and we're gonna sew the side seams and the bottom up to the opening. When you're sewing on the bottom, make sure you're gonna leave the opening unsewn and that you're gonna backstitch well uh, on the end and on the beginning of the seam. You're gonna be sewing with the uh, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Uh, you can increase the seam allowance uh, on the sides to, to make sure that the lining fits nice and snug inside of your bag. Now that the sides and the bottom of the lining is sewn and I left the opening, uh, we're gonna box our corners. So we're gonna repeat what we did with the outer panel. You're gonna mark one inch squares from the seam allowances. Open the corners.
and that's the seam allowances against each other. Repeat that on the other side. Again, make sure you are folding the seam allowance on the bottom seam in the same direction. When you have the lining prep like this, take it to the machine and sew both corners with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 or 3.5 stitch line. Now that our corners are boxed, we're gonna attach the lining to the outer panel. So what you wanna do, you wanna leave the outer uh, right side out. You can fold it up a little bit because our lining is shorter than the outer. And because the uh, lining in just uh, it's just a plain lining without any packets, we can just uh, put it in uh, either way. So you just wanna make sure you are putting the outer right side together with the lining start clipping the top edges together starting with the side seams And now clip the top edge all around. When you have that prepped, take it to the machine and sew all around the top edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 or 3.5 stitch line. Now that the top seam is completed, uh, we're going to turn our project right side out. Place the lining inside. And making sure that the lining is touching the bottom of the back, you want to fold your top edge and it should be folding when uh, where your little side openings are so do that on the other side just push the box corner into the box corner of the outer and the top edge should be folding uh, on the top of your opening just pull on the side to make sure that the whole top edge folds in the same place and you can finger press it and you can for now secure that with clips make sure that the top loop looks nice and straight and when you have that fold prepped take it to the ironing board and uh, iron to get a nice crisp top edge and to uh, make sure that the lining is folding nicely inside of your back and now that uh, you have your top edge nicely ironed so the fold uh, the fabric keeps the fold by itself we gonna create our channel for our drawstring so we're not gonna be top stitching along the top edge but we're gonna be sewing a seam all around the back that is one inch uh, below the top edge if you feel it's gonna be a little hard to keep a straight uh, seam line you can take a ruler and just make little marks all around your back with the erasable marker to make sure you have a point of reference while you're sewing so we're going to be creating the drawstring um, 
channel and if you are uh, if you are a little concerned about keeping a straight line seam at one inch uh, just remember that this part will be squished together so really when you're carrying the back nobody will be able to see if that seam is not 100 percent uh, straight so don't stress too much about it just make sure uh, you are uh, sewing from that point to the point uh, of the opening all around your project so my top seam uh, is done so I created my uh, channel for my drawstrings. Now I have to finish up my lining. So just pull out the lining, pull on the opening and the fabric should um, fold nicely towards the inside and clip it. And when you have your lining prep like this, take it to the machine and top stitch along the opening with 116 or 18 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch. Now that my lining is closed, I can place it back in the backpack. And now the last thing to do is just to insert our drawstring straps. So take your rope and some and take a threading tool. And start threading your drawstring all around. One side is done, so now I'm gonna move on to the other side. And with the other string, you wanna start with the end that doesn't have a strap coming out. When you have both uh, drawstrings uh, threaded through your loop, uh, you can now thread w one of the ends through the top or two ends through the top, depending on uh, what look you like. I think I'm gonna try to thread both of them. And you just can tie a knot on the end. And your backpack is completed. Your project is now completed. Uh, your backpack is ready to use. It has a nice large pocket in the front for any items you want to have quick access to. It has a nice secure zipper pocket on the back for any valuables like your wallet or your phone or car keys. And inside it has a plenty of space for any other items you would like to carry with you. I think it would be a great bag to uh, have with you at any uh, barbecue get together uh, to take it to a, a pool party or uh, to take it with you to the beach. Uh, if you did enjoy this tutorial please make sure to give the video a like and if you would like me to create more tutorials please make sure to subscribe to my channel. 
If you create one of those bags, please make sure to share your creation with me. You can do that uh, in the Facebook group or you can tag me on Instagram. Links to both are in the description box below. Till the next time.